Welcome to Amp Test Tuesday. RMS, 1700 watts, 1200 watts and 600, depending on if it's one, two or four ohms. Now the main reason I chose this amp this time is because I saw this logo on it. CEA 2006 compliant. That means it's supposed to do the numbers that's on the box. Well, let's find out. As usual, I'm using three excess power D1400 batteries. They are 14 volt batteries to simulate your car running with an alternator on. It's not perfect, but it's pretty close. And up inside of here, I have three chargers, one for each bank, 12, 14, and 16. I'm only using the 14 volt bank, and I'm only using that middle charger. It's not a power supply, it's a 10 amp charger. So, so it's not making that big of a difference, it's just keeping the batteries fresh. So you're going to see a little bit higher of a number, but if anything, with that higher voltage, I'm giving these amps the full benefit of the doubt. So even if the number is a little higher than you would expect in your car, maybe about 14.8, 14.9, uh, still, I'm giving the amp the full benefit. So let's see how this thing does. Let's fire it up. Alright, as you can see, the amplifier did a lot better in Dynamic Burst RMS. And keep in mind, Dynamic Burst RMS is not a peak number. It's still RMS. It's just more of a simulation of music. Whereas Test 1 and 2, Certified and Uncertified, is a 10 second sine wave that's basically pure torture on the amp. Um, the Dynamic Burst RMS actually pulses when it's testing. It's a little bit better on the electrical system and it gives you more of an indication of what you might expect when playing music and not just 10 seconds of a, a, of a sine wave. Uh, when you're listening to music, you may not ever even see a 10 second sine wave, even with the longest bass notes. But the fact that this one did over 1700 watts in dynamic burst is pretty darn good. Really, in my book, any amp that can pass the test in dynamic burst RMS is doing okay because the amps that are real bad won't pass dynamic burst or any of the other tests. All right, just for fun before I end this video, Let's go ahead and drop this thing down to 0.8 ohms. Now the manufacturer doesn't recommend that. One ohm is the minimum. And uh, I actually did try 0.6 ohms. It went into protect at 0.6 ohms, so don't try it. But 0.8 ohms, let's see what it does, just for fun. We'll try 0.8 ohms.
so while this amp seemed to underperform just a little bit in the certified and uncertified test, Dynamic RMS, it overperformed and it did really well. So that tells me that this amp likes music more than anything else. So it's really not a bad deal. For $299, which is what I went and bought this amp for today, you're going to get 1800 watts on music and around 12 to 1400 watts on a steady, more hardcore basis.